Welcome to the Chicago Bears Podcast. A presentation of ESPN Chicago, Chicago's home for sports. Here's your host, Pat, the designer. Paradigm Bears fans, welcome into another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Wednesday is here, which means J Mac is in the building. Jason McKee, as we keep Packers Week going through all of the things and reasons that we hate, as Jason says, that team up north. But today, got to talk about some of the question marks that come in on some of these weapons. And are the Bears coming into this season with less weapons, or I'm sorry, with less questions than the Packers when it comes to the pieces in play? We'll talk about all that more on today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Let's get into the show. J-Mac, how are you doing, man? Offseason is here. Practice is in full swing. How's your how's your uh, team looking this year, man? Looking good, man. Just uh, getting into the swing of things here in June. Uh, been at it for almost three weeks. So uh, this will be our last week. We get a nice little break with the 4th of July coming up. So we'll kick things back off in July after the 4th of July. So it's been good, man. The kids have been – have been uh, we've been stalling a lot. The kids have been picking it up. Yeah. Um, just kind of getting their feet wet, um, you know, trying to really establish an identity – Every year is a new team, graduated some seniors last year, uh, got a lot of kids returning starters coming back. So it's fun, man. It's fun to be out there, out on the field. You know, Olin Cruz is out there revving up our O-line. Rasheed Davis is out there calling all kinds of plays and different things like that. So it's fun, man. It's 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 fun. It's a grind, but it's fun. And on top of that, we've had our our youth camps in the morning. So it's been, it's been double duty. So I've been on the field uh, pretty much all day. Yeah. But, uh Anytime we get to talk Bears, you know, it's a, it's a good break from from all that stuff and, you know, a great opportunity to continue talking football. Man, let's keep it going, man. I think we got a very interesting conversation today, especially when it comes into the Chicago Bears versus the Green Bay Packers as we're continuing through our look throughout the division. We've uh, talked with a lot of different people on this and uh, Courtney Cronin been on here, right? I mean, we, we've we been great. Lance Briggs on Monday. He, he Lance gave Packers fans a little bit. Of, he, he gave them like a little pass. I ain't going to lie to you. I was a little surprised by that. He gave him a little bit of a pass out here. He's like, they're not that bad to me. I was like, dog, come on now. Uh, <laughs> I heard I heard I heard y'all show Monday. I was like, man, Lance, you got yeah, man, I mean, you, were, you got a little soft in your retirement, bro. <laughs> bro. I was like, I feel like that's not the visceral hate that he was spewing during while he was still wearing the jersey on the field. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Briggs is out there laying people out, you know, in Green Bay up at Lambeau. And now he's giving, you know, Packers fans <laughs> pass. Man, I'm not giving nobody <laughs> pass. Like, I mean, prime example, Pat, like our youth camp. Yeah. We've got, you know, about 50 kids at our youth camp. We yeah, do it yeah. in the morning, and, uh, you know, one kid comes up to me. He's like, hey, coach, uh, did you used to play for the Bears? I said, yeah, probably before you was born. He's like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah, well, he's like, yeah, I'm a Packers fan. I was like, what? You a what? He's like, yeah, I'm a Packers fan. I said, you know what? Drop down and give me 20, man. Give me 20 for being a Packers fan. Let's get some Packer push-ups then. So he looks at me like I'm crazy. I said, get down and give me 20. He gets down and give me 20, then it's his – he uh. So he's doing 20. He's struggling. Then he looks over at his buddy. He's like, wait a minute, coach. He's a Packers fan, too. I said, oh. hey, man. I said, hey, man, you know what to do. He flips <laughs> over and starts giving me 20, man. I'm not giving anybody a pass, bro. Nobody. <laughs> hey, man, you got you to gotta give my man an extra 20 just for snitching, though. Hold <laughs> on now. My man's snitching out here. We can't be doing that, dog. Come on, bro. <laughs> but, I mean, at the end of the day, here's the thing, right? When, when, it, when it's all said and done, we start our season off versus this Packers team. And I think that, you know, this is a great way to kind of get into that next uh, uh, um, era of Bears Packers football, hopefully with us on the winning end a lot more often. But when you look at both teams, when you look at what the Bears are coming into the season with and what the Packers are coming into this season with, I see questions on both sides. But the question for me is, who has the least amount? Who are you more confident looking at throughout the season? The quarterback matchup is a great place to start. We've seen what Justin Fields can do. What are your thoughts on Jordan Love, though? Do you feel like he could be a threat to us week one off of the simple fact of nobody's really seen anything on Jordan Love and everybody has a ton of questions on this guy? Yeah, for sure. It's hard. I mean, you're game planning for a guy that you you don't have no, no real good film on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and you can't even really go back to college because it's a whole different system, whole yeah. different scheme. So, you know, he has the tools and the talent. Obviously, he's a highly regarded quarterback coming out of college. So, you know, he has the ability. 
Um, the question is, you know, you look at the weapons around him as well, and we know weapons and they, you know, help a quarterback to be successful. And I got a lot of questions about the weapons he has around him. I mean, look at Christian Watson. Uh, you know, he's going to be their number one guy. He hasn't been a number one, you know, yet. He's getting his opportunity yeah. this year. Uh, you look at a young guy, they have Romeo Dobbs, a guy who showed some promise. Um, so a lot of question marks, you know, with Green Bay. I think the only certainty that you have is you have that two-headed monster at running back. And Dylan and Jones, you know, those guys can can be Jordan Love's best friend. And, you know, as, as, as a Bears defense, we struggled against the run last year. So, you know, I would I look forward to seeing, you know, what type of game plan that the Packers put together a uh, week one against our Chicago Bears. And, you know, if, I, if I'm the Green Bay Packers coach, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to – to make the game plan quarterback friendly for Jordan Love. So you can expect him to get that running game revved up. You know, obviously, you know, get some play action passes, high percentage uh, throws for uh, Jordan Love to get comfortable. And, uh, you know, I think I think right now, I think we're, you know, in terms of if you look at the roster, and you know, I like where we're sitting better yeah. than what the Packers are. I think we have less question marks on our roster than they do. And I think you you brought up such a key point that running game is the one thing that I think the Bears really have to focus on. That's probably the one solidified place that I think the Packers have that I still I, I guess with the Bears more so we have question marks on uh, will it be as consistent as it was last season if Justin Fields isn't running the football every other play and that's our hope on this. But when I look at that running game, I think that that's their biggest probably their biggest help, right, to Jordan Love. A good running game is the biggest thing that you can help a young quarterback with. But I also look at the Bears on the other side of that, and I've seen the additions that they made, a lot of guys who are really good at stopping the run. I think that that's got to be the Bears' focus going into week one. That's got to be the Bears' focus throughout the season because you do play a lot of these quarterbacks who have to rely on their run game. Your your Kirk Cousins. Uh, I think Jared Goff is even still in there, right? Jared Goff threw the ball a lot, but he relied on his run game a ton last season. And so for me, when I look at this Packers team, I think that I guess right now, right, I'd give the Packers the edge running the foot or with the with the running backs that they have when i look at the bears though i look at our wide receiver room and i'm I, maybe it's just dj Moore, but i am a ton more confident in the help that we have in the guys catching the football than what the packers have i love christian watson i wanted christian watson for the bears with last season when we were picking a little bit later but uh packers took him really i, I think they took him beginning of the second round they took him a lot higher than i yeah. thought he was going to go but when you look at the wide receiver room as a whole do you think that the bears are in a better position with their receivers uh as far as helping out the quarterback right quarterbacks in similar situations than the packers are in right now yeah without a doubt i think when you look at it in terms of just the productivity that the guys on the bears roster have had you look at darner mooney he's had a successful season you know under his belt already Look at Chase Claypool. He did some things there in Pittsburgh that made him successful. And obviously, we know what DJ Moore's body of work is. So you have more guys in that wide receiver room in Chicago that's proven, uh, so to speak, than, than the Green Bay Packers. You know, Christian Watson had a good year last year, but it still remains to be seen. Can he be the true number one? We know DJ Moore's a number one. He's shown that in Carolina with, you know, a carousel of quarterbacks. So yeah. I like the fact that you know, we have a ton of weapons for Justin to, to get that ball distributed to. And not to mention, you throw in the fact that you're still Robert Tunyon and you've got Cole Komet. Yes. you got Cole Komet over yes. there, too. So we look at the tight ends and, and you know, I, we got an advantage there as well. So, you know, when we talk, you talk about the running game, too. Obviously, I, I'm going to tip my hat towards the Packers because, you know, I'm, I'm really a real huge fan of uh, Dylan and Jones. But, you know, the X factor is, you know, you look at um, Deontay uh, – Deontay Foreman, you don't yeah. know what he's going to bring to the table. You know what he did in Carolina. You know he has the ability to make things happen when given the opportunity. But we also got to see what's in store for Clear Herbert, you know, in terms of, you know, can he be the lead back as well? Yeah. But then you got to factor in, like we said, we don't want Justin to run the ball as much as he did last year. But you don't want to negate him from doing that because he brings that that innate playmaking ability to be able to take that ball to distance, be able to break tackles, be able to make somebody miss, and then take that thing to the house. So. You know, in terms of that, I think dynamically we've got a, a way more dynamic lineup than the Packers do. And don't sleep on the fact that, remember, Luke Getze from that system, right? I think that he's a guy who is trying to replicate what they saw. He's not trying to make it his own and make it – well, he's making it his own, but he's not making it completely different, right? But he's trying to replicate what the Packers are doing. You look at that run game, to me that is – 
where the Bears are trying to copy exactly what the Packers are on. Khalil Herbert, Deontay Foreman, two guys that are both speed guys. Okay, catching the ball out of the backfield. We'd like to see a little bit more out of them. You're adding in Roshan, who kind of is a different type of back than both of those two are but just that dual threat that ability to have multiple backs back there running the football being aggressive that's what the Packers basic that's what their offense pretty much to me is going to be this season and you brought up such a good point Robert Tunyon I think is going to be an absolute safety blanket for Justin Fields this season I know a lot of people are are big believers in Cole Komet taking this next step I think that Robert Tunyon coming in and already knowing 100% what this system is, we're not. I would love to see us run twin tight end sets. <laughs> I don't think that we're going to run a ton of them. I think that Luke Getzey's going to kind of have his guy that he wants. And Robert Tunyon just is a guy that has thrived in this system already. You've seen him be successful in this system already. You've seen him know the right places to be where it took Cole Komet kind of towards the end of the season to kind of find that along with Justin Fields. So, I think that Luke is just building that offense on the Bears side where on the Packers side, right, they lost some of the major weapons that made that offense what it was. Remember, Robert Tunyon and and, uh, Aaron Rodgers last season were the offense for a while passing the football until Christian Watson kind of figured out his game halfway through the season. Yeah, for sure. That's a great point, too. And you look at, you know, plus Tanya, you know, you bring a guy, uh, you know, who had success in Green Bay from a similar scheme. So, he can help aid in your game planning. So don't forget, these coaches are going to ask Tanya, you know, what are some of the tendencies? What are some of the things you guys did there uh, in Green Bay to make you successful? And he'll be able able to give them that information. um, You know, what is this type? What was this player like? What was that player like? He'll be able to give them that that inside information that they wouldn't get, you know, unless they were actually in the building. So that's another thing that 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 Robert, uh, the value that Robert Tanya brings here to Chicago. And and I think, you know, like you said, you're talking about the two tight end sets. I, I like to, I hope he does use, you know, what we call 12 personnel, one back, two tight ends. I hope he does use that that type of set because now when you have that extra tight end or that ace tight end, that move tight end, right, yeah. it brings you – you can get real creative because now you have another chess piece in which you can move him around. You can get creative in the run game. You can window dress things a lot more and make things look different and still run your base, you know, run package or your base, you know, base route concepts. But you make it look different by moving that tight end around. So it gives you some flexibility. It gives you an opportunity to, hey – if you want to run the ball, you can dictate numbers in the box to where you have an advantage, where you can get an extra guy uh, in terms of, you know, a hat on a hat, you get an extra guy, you know, and that side of the formation in terms of where you're trying to run the ball. So I think when you have the ability to have two solid tight ends that can be effective as run blockers, but also uh, be effective in the passing games and, and create mismatches on linebackers or safeties who are covering those guys, I think that's another added dimension that Robert Tunyon will bring to this offense. What is having that um, uh, you, when you just come from that team, right? What is having that insight, that knowledge add to the everyday, right? Like making the players around him better, making, right? Is there is there that I'm on the team, I right, this is his tendency on this one, right? You need to attack like this, not like that. You need to do this like this, not like that. Like, is that is that right? Week one Packer week is Robert Tunyon basically like, hey, that we don't need to be doing that. We need to be doing this instead. Have you seen that? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure players, they they, you know, I mean, a lot of coaches, right? They'll they'll change a lot of things, but they really don't want to, right? Because they yeah. want to keep things simple so that way the guys can play fast. You know what I'm saying? So when you're when you're a guy coming from uh, a, 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 a team that you play pre, uh, play for previously, you come to right. a new team, you're facing that team, you're going to spill the beans. Hey, you know, when he goes kill, kill, it's going to either be this run play or that pass play. Yeah. You know, we they like the major in this protection. This guy is not solid in, you know, in this protection or, or what have you. So it's definitely to an advantage. And, you know, coaches know that, but they can't change the entire scheme based upon one player leaving. So there's going to mm-hmm. be some things that, that Tanya will be able to give our defense and, and give our team keys and tips that certain uh, guys, you know, may have on that on that Packers roster. When you look at it, how the Bears' offensive line is coming up against uh, this this Packers defensive line, do you feel somewhat confident in the guys that we saw last season going up against them? I mean, it's we didn't play terribly uh, uh, um, in line play last season versus the Packers. It, I mean, it wasn't good, but like. Nothing last season was that good. We won three football games. But, like, I think that I think even looking at the offensive line coming into this season, adding in Darnell Wright 
you know, um, adding in Nate Davis to Cody Whitehair and Braxton Jones, Tevin Jenkins. I think that the Bears, surprisingly enough, starting off a season might actually have the advantage in the trenches, at least on the offensive side. The defensive side is, is going to be a, uh, something to see. But I, I feel like there's an advantage offensively right now in the trenches for the Bears. What do you think? Yeah, I just like the fact that, you know, last year we saw so many different combinations of the offensive line, you know, starting offensive line. Yeah. Uh, in the lineup each and every week. And, you know, like we said last week on the pod, we talked about, you know, just having Tevin Jenkins focus on playing left guard. You know, yeah. Bringing, you know, a guy who's played some good football at a uh, squatty body athletic guy and Nate Davis at the right guard. And you bring in Darnell, you draft Darnell right at right tackle. And then you continue to develop Braxton Jones at left tackle. Move Cody Whitehair to center, you know, a guy who's played a lot of football. Um, so the cohesiveness that they're going to have going into – into week one as compared to last year where they had so many guys in and out of the lineup, that's going to be huge because chemistry is everything. Communication is everything, is everything on the offensive line. You know, right now in our practices, we're working on communication and chemistry, you know, yep. making sure we have the right five in there, um, executing, being on the same page, being able to make the right calls and stuff like that. So that's, that's the true value of an offensive line. When you can play as a unit and things are moving fast, you can make calls and everybody's on the same page and the same accord. You know, you're going to execute better. So that's what I'm really encouraged about, you know, seeing this offensive line progress throughout training camp, a little bit of time in preseason. We know they're probably not going to play as much. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, going into week one, we know who those five is going to be. When you look at this Packers defense, I mean, a lot of first round picks on the defensive side of the ball right now. A lot of a lot of picks that, you know, we, we expect to do something. But compared to what the Bears have added, I think maybe the Packers are coming in with a little bit more depth. I think that the Bears are coming in still with the questions on the pass rush side. When you look at both defenses, who are you feeling more confident about heading into this season right now uh, based off what we saw last season and the additions that both have made? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I think with so many new pieces, you know, on our side of the ball, bringing a lot of new guys, new linebackers, you got some obviously some new D tackles. Um, guy, we, we didn't get to the quarterback enough last year. So I think there's question marks on both sides, you know, of the ball in terms of defensive line. Um, I think it's going to be huge, especially if, if we can get pressure on a young quarterback like Jordan Love and make him uncomfortable, you know, get his jersey dirty. That's yeah. going to help us, you know, extreme. That's going to help us a ton. Um, I really like what we have in the secondary um, in terms of our, our guys that we added. You know, I hope Tyreek Stevenson can take the next step uh, back there. But like I said before, I'm real excited about Jaquan Brisker. And the fact that we may have the opportunity of getting, um, you know, Eddie Jackson back if he returns to form. And I really like what we have on the back end. But, you know, in this defense, you've got to get pressure with four. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter who you have on the back and you got to get yeah. pressure with four. And that's something that we couldn't do last year. And if we don't get pressure with four, all those guys that I named in the secondary is all for nothing because, hey, it's only, it's only you know, you can only cover so guys so long, you know. It, it's – I think that this opening week could be a game where we see ball hawking Eddie Jackson, Jaquan Brisker, uh, maybe even Jalen Johnson being able to get an interception in that because there's going to be so much pressure. There's going to be so much on Jordan Love's shoulders. He's taking his first snaps as the quarterback after two Hall of Famers <laughs> over 40 years nice. getting the start. Like that is an intense amount of pressure it's one of the reasons that i do feel good about this game for me with justin right justin's coming into the second year of his of uh, of this system he's got some of the best weapons he's ever had some of the best weapons we've seen in chicago but some of the best weapons he's ever had on this team right uh he's coming in with an understanding coming in with uh, better offensive line play improved play upon himself I think that Justin Fields can kind of come in and it's not to say that he's relaxed, that he's chilling. I, I think that he understands the moment, but that he understands that, I okay, this is what I need to do to make everybody around me better, and I can come in very calm. I think Jordan Love got some pressure that it might be a little tough, especially to start things off. I think we could see Jordan Love possibly the first few weeks of this season before he's finally fully settled in and relaxed after coming in after Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers because you know the pressure's going to be on him game one. Yeah, for sure, man. It's tough. We Like you said, you're following in, in the footsteps of those two guys. You know, yeah. you have Brett and then obviously Aaron Rodgers, when he, when he got an opportunity to start, he was in those same shadows as a Brett Favre and now Jordan Love steps in the same shadows as, as A-Rod. 
Um, you know, I can see him being a young quarterback, you know, trying to come in, trying to take a manager's team, trying to make a name for himself. And when you have that type of situation, quarterbacks may send the press, right? He may he may try to, you know, play play out of his comfort zone, you know, yeah, not yeah. play within the scheme, you know, trying to make the big play when he should just take, you know, the, he should just take the check down or, or something like that. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what type of composure he has, you know, getting his first start against, you know, uh, Bears. Obviously, a huge rival at Soldier Field. It's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. Um, you know how he handles the pressure, how he handles the moment, how he handles the comparisons. Because you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't come out the gate, uh, you know, putting up, you know, Aaron Rodgers like performances. Well, you know, the Packers fans who we've been talking about, there's going to be some boo birds out there. And oh you know, yeah, this guy, this not our guy. Whereas on the flip side of things, you look at Justin. Does he have pressure? Yes, he's got a lot of pressure because now. And then there's no excuse. There's no excuse to say, hey, you know what? There's no weapons around Justin. Like last year, we didn't have the receiving core around Justin. We didn't have the great offensive line around Justin. Uh, the one thing we did have for Justin last year was a running game. But now you pair that with the type of receivers that we've been able to bring in and the additions that we've made in the offensive line. So for Justin, you know, I think he he doesn't – hopefully he doesn't, he doesn't try to press as well just to live up to those type of expectations that a lot of people have for him this season – I hope he just plays within the system, plays within the scheme, and just, you know, gets the ball in the hands of his playmakers, rely on the running game, and, uh, you know, I think everything else will take care of himself because he's already a dynamic player enough. He's yeah. going to make the big plays, but I think he just needs to to to, to remain within the scheme and, and, and to really, you know, if you need to run, go ahead and run. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You know, do what, you, do what you've done your whole career, but don't press. Don't force things. And I think if he stays within himself – stays true to the, to the scheme and the game plan, I think Justin's going to be fine. Let's finish it off on this, J-Mac. I always love having former Bears on here because they get to uh, actually have been in the Bears-Packers rivalry. Uh, which favorite moment uh, that you were a part of during the Bears versus Packers rivalry? Man, it's a bunch of them, Pat. I think uh, 2005, um, and I actually rewatched this game because um, I knew we were going to be talking about this the other day, but 2005 it was Christmas Day. Uh, you know, we played up at Lambeau. Yeah, I think we won that game. It was a twenty-four to seventeen, and mm -hmm. and that was the first year we swept the Packers. Uh, we clinched the division. We got a first round bye. But just going back and rewatching that game, and you know, you knew our I knew our defense was good. You know what I'm saying? You're you're in that moment. You're living it. But our yeah. defense was damn good, man. I mean, in two games against the Packers, I think they had five interceptions. Yeah, yeah. the game I'm talking about, they had three picks. It was a good time. I remember. Man, it was a great time. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> it was a great time, man. And, and that was the first time that, that we had clinched the NFC North in a long time and got that first round by. So yeah. Uh that was one of the games that 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 really, you know, that 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 game really, you know, resonates in my mind. Uh, also the, the following year, 2006, the opener, we played up there at Lambeau, uh, oh, yeah. beat them 26 to zero. Once again, our defense got the best of Brett Favre <laughs> again. So uh, you know, it's it just we had some good moments, man. We had a good run against them. I think in 2007, we swept them again, uh, even though we didn't go to the playoffs that year, but we swept the Packers again in, in 2007. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm glad that, you know, my time in a Bears uniform, we were on the winning things uh, yeah. in terms of this robbery. But let's hope the Bears get back on track and get back on the winning, the winning things in this robbery. Yeah, I, I think that's the that's the one thing that I always think back to is like, it's it's funny now, like with the recency bias and and like I mean the last probably seven years, it's just like man the Packers have really just throttled us like and with everything that we've gone through. But then like you kind of forget like with you guys as teams, y'all were with, like Lovey was serious. He was like, no, we're gonna beat the Packers. Like we're not losing to that team up north. We're we're gonna go in there. We're gonna compete. We're gonna come out on the winning side. And it just like you almost forget about that because, right, like part of that is Brett and then Aaron comes in and, you know, the defense was kind of going the other direction. And and there was there was a lot of, you know, losses that went into that part. But I just I remember those years of just like dominating the Packers and just being like, this is perfect. Like, this is all I dream. Like, I'm going to tell you this right now. As a Bears fan, there is nothing better. There are years of my life that I remember as being better years, and the only thing I can attribute to it is the Packers were winning. I I swear, last time we went to the playoffs, I was working construction. Uh, I was working 12 hours a day, six days a week, still doing the podcast, still trying to make this thing happen out here. 
And it was one of the, like, I thought about it the other day. I was like, man, we had so much fun that year. And it was like, you worked 110% of the time. But it was so much fun just breaking down Bears football and winning Bears football. And, uh, you know, we was, we was on uh, the Packers that season. Uh, that first game didn't go as planned. But, you know, I mean, it, it, it'd be <laughs> it'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we, we was on we was on their heels that season. So yeah, it's always season. fun, man. It's always a good time. What One last thing uh, before you go. What is what is the one memory that you have of playing the Packers that you always are like, man, if we just got one more shot at that, we we'd have we'd we'd came out on the winning end of that one. If we could have ran that one back a little bit different, we'd have been on the winning end of that one. You know, I, really looking back at it, you know, no, no, no real regrets. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I think, uh, you know, I think the opportunities that we had when we, when we played the Packers, I think we took advantage of. It. You know, the one thing, our Super Bowl year, our last game of the season, uh, they beat the brakes off of us. And you know, we were, I think, a lot of guys. I wish we would have finished the season off differently that year, um, and not have lost to the Packers because we could have swept them again. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That would have been. Dang near three years in a row, we would have swept swept the rivalry uh, if we would have beat them our Super Bowl year back in 06, which was the last game of the season before the playoffs. So, but I think that that was a case where, you know, we had a lot of guys resting, getting ready for the playoffs and stuff yeah. like that. So, now I'd say, you know what, we gave them a donation. But at the end of the day, the best thing, the best thing about it was, though, Pat, we got to watch their behinds go home and they got to watch us in the playoffs. You know, hey, so, yeah. hey that's what we hoping for out here, man. That's what we need, man. That's yeah, what we need. Hey, I made Lance do this. I'm going to make you do it too. The way, 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 way too early prediction for week one because we have no idea what it, what is going to happen, who's going to be on the team at all. Uh, what's your prediction for Bears Packers week one? Way too early right now. Yeah, I'm taking the Bears. Definitely. We got the better roster. Uh, we obviously got the better quarterback. Um, I think we have the better defense and just the energy that's going to be there at Soldier Field in terms of the fans. I mean, the fans at Soldier Field is great, especially yeah. with this rivalry, man. And, and I just want to let the fans know, like, we truly feed off your energy, man. We hear you guys screaming, you know, especially when it gets cold. We see the guys out there with no shirt on, the bodies painting and stuff like that. You know, come out, man. Come out and just, you know, cheer, cheer that team on, man, because the stronger you are, the stronger this team will play and we'll feed off your energy and emotion. So, and I think it's going to be a pack house. You know, I'm excited to to be there covering the game on the sideline. Oh, yeah. so I'm going to try to keep my emotions in check and make sure I'm professional, uh, you know, doing the <laughs> sideline report. I, I don't want to ha have the mic turned on and be like, catch the ball. Or, you know what I'm saying? Something <laughs> crazy like that. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. I'm taking the Bears for sure. Uh, score prediction, I'm going to say 28-21. 28-21 Bears. That's not a bad first game for Jordan Love. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, 28-21, like, Bears winning, that's great. 28 yeah. points, that's great. But that's not a bad first game for Jordan Love, which makes me question some of our defense. I think the real question, and we'll leave it on this, who's going to have the better coaching staff this season? That's what it's all going to yeah. come down to at the end of the day is Flus. We, we talk about the players taking the next step. Is Flus going to take the next step? Is Getsy going to take the next step? Yeah. What does Allen Williams do when we're not ripping the defense out from underneath his feet? All those questions. Hey, let us know how you guys feel in the comments below. Do you think the Bears will end up with the better coaching staff? We'll be down there talking with you as well. As always, man, it's your boy, Path the Designer, joined by Jason McKee. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Big Bear Don. Bear down. Thanks.